Hello, good afternoon. Hi, good so afternoon. You're going to be your interpreter for today. We're just going to let you know that you have a... Oh, I don't need an interpreter. You need an interpreter? Well, we're doing it for the service of our deaf student right here. So he's yeah, working. but I don't need an interpreter, so... Well, okay. but she needs a, yeah, to communicate in order to understand you. Oh, to understand you. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. And, and what are you interpreting? I'm going to be interpreting uh, the class. So don't hesitate. You can do it as far as you can, as close as you can, however you want, you would like to. And we just have to do our job, let you know that. Okay, but what language? Sign language interpretation. Oh, sign language. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so cool. I've always wanted to learn that. Yeah, it's really interesting. You should learn. Such a beautiful language. It's so nice of you to do that. Thank you volunteer? You. No, um, that's, that's our job, and we're just served here for the community. Oh, you get paid for that. Wow, is it good money? That well, I'm not allowed to say that. Oh, okay, okay. I guess that's understandable. Well, it's, I'm, it's not an appropriate question to be asking. <laughs> All right, well, we'll get started. Did you record that? Yeah. All right, um, so we're going to go over uh, a few of the scenarios with Master of the NIC Written Workbook by Shauna McGee. You are called to interpret for a deaf consumer you have interpreted for numerous times before. You know that this person has gone to three different emergency rooms for painkillers because you've interpreted for all three. Now she is in the fourth emergency room complaining of severe back pain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so your job is to interpret as is and well, saying anything else would fall in my opinion. I guess you could say it's a bit of a bitch of that kind of thing to say if you know those three other answers because all three are considered the same to me. So yeah, except for first, it's not considered the same. Well, you know, that might. And it's good to have that back information for the sake of uh, knowing how the signs and what the symptoms are going to be. That kind of uh, if it's a familiar sound or you know what they see or how they can be heard, stuff like that, it's fine. But to bring it up, it's not. They're not bringing it up. Okay, Kara. Um, I do think because it is kind of a sticky situation and. What's being implied is that you have reason to suspect that they're like overdosing and abusing the drug, correct? So in situations like that, I believe it might be okay to anonymously report it because it could be a hazard. Why to would their you safety report it? Oh, a hazard to their safety. If but they're overdosing on drugs, how do you know if they are overdosing on drugs? Though, are you a doctor? I suppose not. It might be it might be drug taking, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she's using them. She could be drunk and that's not in your place. There's nothing that this case hospital has or a system in place that tracks patients. Every time I go to the hospital, every time I go to a doctor and they start diving a narcotic, my name goes into the system. It's not our job to go back and look for it. Yeah, that's correct. If you've ever seen this nicest kind of town life. <laughs> <laughs> but she's never seen a Marvel movie. <laughs> 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 TLC commercials love to do the show. Um, <laughs> there was one guy that had gone from hospital to hospital to hospital for years. You saw that one? Yeah. <laughs> and I guess it never caught up to him until he was on this show with Dr. Now. And, um,. Yeah, so he called him out on it, and it was interesting. So he wouldn't give him any medication, so he went to another hospital, and he's, they, he's still got medication. So it's interesting how they're supposed to track it, and it, they do, I guess, track it, but yet he's still able to get it from some hospitals. Yeah, how do you think of, it feels like a circle, like so many, like a, like a 10-mile radius, and if you're going from the hospital to some other town, it's a 10-mile radius, so it's impossible. But if you're going from, like, town to town, mm. you might get this Interesting. The Good to know. Good to know. Well, that's because they have those pill mills down here, and we have pain killers with problems. People from North Carolina and Georgia coming down here to get their prescriptions to go back up to Antonio. That's how I know it is. 
All right, next scenario. <laughs> you are a... Okay, we might be interrupted by Debbie, so just a heads up. I'm waiting for that text. You are a certified interpreter, and your CEU cycle is almost up. You are two hours shy of completion, but don't see another opportunity to earn CEUs except your friend's workshop. The problem is that her workshop is on the same day as your sister's wedding. Your friend has offered to add your name to the list of attendees. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. sorry, yeah. sis. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a nice gift. Yeah. 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 You know what? Yeah, that's that could yeah. make up for it. FaceTime the, the, the wedding while you're at the workshop. <laughs> Technology <laughs> today. <laughs> well, I mean, see, a wedding is like maybe what four hours, right? Well, who's to like say a, she's not going to be married in twenty five years? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's messed up, though. Okay. Wait. That's a wedding is like four hours. Okay, so what are our really options? Two hours. Our options are our options. show up to the, and do your class. Do, do the workshop. workshop. It, can okay. We, can we or do not? extensions? I don't know. Extension. Oh, I don't know. Okay. You'd have to call RID. Now, I mentioned it to my ethics and professionalism class, I think, but not this class. Uh, recently, I went at the RID website, and um, you know they keep updating and changing things around. When you're searching for a member name there, it comes up like on the top before you search in blue letters. And it says something about if you want to see uh, the interpreter certifications that have lapsed due to um, not enough CEUs. So you click on that link, and oh. wow. <laughs> region one, two, oh, three, four, all of the regions and lists and lists of names who have let their certification last because they didn't get enough CEU credits. So that's kind of interesting. And then at the bottom, you'll see a couple of them, you know, in each region that have uh, gotten their license uh, reinstated. Reinstated. reinstated, yeah. So I guess there's a way that you can get it reinstated. Uh, so, yeah, so another option would be to contact RID and see what your options are as well. I'm sure it's like not that strict that you know that you're going to lose your certification forever and ever. So two hours, I'm sure they can work with that. <laughs> All right, moving on. You are attending a seminar on deaf education. Oh, that's the wrong page number. Hold on. Okay, so I'm asking her if she needs help. She's here, if she needs help carrying some stuff. I know it will be done in 10 minutes with our activity. I don't think you need to carry any stuff. I think you can just do what you can carry. I don't think that is an issue. I had a someone else to add to that. Oh, someone else. Yeah, you're getting I'll somebody else. Someone else. <laughs> After the, meeting. the USF presentation yeah. tomorrow, that will be through Blackboard and Collaborate. And then also Sandy Mahoney that was supposed to be here will also be as a webinar, not during our class today. Okay, she's typing. I'm waiting for her answer. In the meantime, I'll read one of your of the scenarios. Is this related to this? No. Okay. Oh wait. Wow, it's long. Okay. 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 She doesn't need help. She's still typing. <laughs> she went into through the exit gate. Okay, we're good. Okay, so you are attending a seminar on deaf education for which there are interpreters for the deaf participants. Okay. One of the interpreters can barely sign. You understand the deaf participants just fine, but the interpreter can't seem to voice for them at all. I feel like I need to read that again. Yeah, please. Okay. One more time. One more time. You are attending a seminar. Okay. You are attending a seminar on deaf education for which there are interpreters for the deaf. She's still talking. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Let me try one more time. 
you are attending a seminar on deaf education for which there are interpreters for the deaf participants there. Okay. One of the interpreters can barely sign. You understand the deaf participants just fine, but the interpreter can't seem to voice for them at all. Oh, so you're just attending. And the actual interpreter. <coughs> Oh, I would definitely call into yeah, the, the organization that does This that. makes me think of um, <coughs> during Hurricane Irma. Remember that oh. guy with the yellow shirt? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Water from wow. Manatee County. <laughs> Water from yeah. Manatee County. Like, no, Air. I would just. <laughs> I would have to. <laughs> Director, why are you disallowed this? Yeah. Would, if you there are, there, would you kick him out and take his place if you were there in the audience? No, but I wouldn't. It was, that like, was okay. Question, no, but here's the thing. That's her question. I want to kick him out. <laughs> no, that's not my question. question. Because I love the agency. It's a straight up for Canyones. What would you do? Yeah, I would definitely question the agency. Call. Oh. But I, I wouldn't even be anonymous about it. I'd be like, yeah, this is an SLI. Okay, and yes. <laughs> what about the deaf participants and empowering the deaf? Okay, I don't know. I mean, it's I not showing up. That the only interpreter so, there at the, at, the, at the event? We don't know. That's the blip we got from the scenario. <laughs> <laughs> That's what normally happens. I mean, yeah, usually it's a, a seminar, team. I would go to the team one. and be like, hey, listen, don't sure. let your boy go off on this. But not necessarily. Because <laughs> like at my aunt's graduation, there was an interpreter, and That's she only one. Only one for a graduation, and she was wearing um, clothing that like didn't contrast her skin, and her thing was like on the, the projector. And my dad like could not understand a single thing, and it's like, so uh, the most you can do is just go to the head of um, maybe the location where they're at, and just like, hey, it has to be they. Nothing is being understood. Like if there are, they're so they're interpreting into English, correct? And this is like the uh, mm -hmm. like the scenario. I mean, yeah. Well, it doesn't both. say it, it could be both. both. It, We're not sure, like, but it says sign. they can. Uh, they they can barely sign and so not understanding what the deaf sign is. Yeah, it says yes. Yeah, it says, uh, but the interpreter oh, can't so seem to voice for them at all. Good. I'm I'm both of, well, oh no. Yeah, I'm with Kevin. Find involved. out if they have a team. Approach if they have a team. Approach that team member. That's if they have a team. What if they don't? In a situation where they don't. Same situation. That's it. It's like. But you, yeah. You again, I know you want to take on everything yourself, and you believe, you know, in this. Wholeheartedly, but also I want to encourage you uh, to also uh, empower the deaf clients because too many times they're not advocating for themselves, um, and so you know you're technically not the interpreter there, so you could let them know that if they're not understanding the interpreters, that they need to let the interpreters know, and that if it doesn't improve, that they can let. Um, whomever's in charge or uh, whoever hired the interpreters, let them know. So that's just one way. There is another way, of course, you're, you yourself could um, tr not interpret. <laughs> you, and that's one thing, like, you got to be very mindful and careful of. When you go to any event and there are interpreters there, whether they the interpreters do, are doing a wonderful, fantastic, amazing job, or they're doing a so-so job, and you want to just chime in there with just one word or one sign, don't. Hold one back, sign. right? It's it's like, you know, if you're a comedian and you're, you know, you're getting heckled, heckled. Yeah. yeah, and it throws them off, you know? Either they have their team or they have nobody and they're relying on their self, and then it's just going to throw them off. You know, basically, it's not going to help out. You have to not assume, but you just want to know. Like, whatever. If they're an interpreter and they're in that situation, you have to trust that you have to trust that they did their research um, on whatever the event or what have you is, so they're confident with what they're doing. Because that's what you would do as an interpreter. If they had been ready, they were up to the plane. Right, but you kind of have to possess a trust. You gotta trust. If it's being exemplified that they're not, hey, we gotta do a little homework. Who are you? You know what I mean? It's their responsibility as an interpreter that you need to have the sign. 
Sonic Day woke up that morning and they said, hey, you heard of Sonic Day. And very likely, <laughs> they knew it was a Sonic Day. But if they had any questions or any subject or issues as well, they would be able to get those out. I would, I would be very honest about this. I'd be like, I'm at this event. This is my name and you're what about <laughs> approach? EPS? What about approaching the actual interpreters themselves? I was going to ask that. That, that flitted through my mind because that's usually what the first like, avenue is. Right. Correct. It's like, do I need to have my son be this person? Do I get him to see this person? Like, no, you got Harry this and Harry that. You're going to shut up. You suck. <laughs> 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 It depends yeah. how yeah. eloquently yeah. you come across. Yeah. I mean, no, you're just like that. I'm just gonna her. You, you suck. suck. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess the thing is, it's, I mean, it's, it's very bare bones, you know? You don't put anything in the boxes at all. Um, you know, it's, it, you're, you're super objective. It's a, it's a situation where you're super objective. Are you well aware of all the things? Is it really your place? You know, like, I wish we had Jewish people on here. I think that'd be <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me do one more because this one's my favorite because it actually happened to me. Oh, uh, okay. yes, you are interpreting in a college classroom with a team interpreter. It's like they wrote my life. <laughs> <laughs> you are in the hot seat. And when it comes time to switch, you look over and find your team interpreter sleeping. <gasps> no, you're lying. Yes, it's all that stuff. has happened so, to me. You're not going to on the shoulder and say, excuse me. Oh, no, I think you're you're not far yeah. away. Oh. We are far away in my situation. I was far away. I could not tap them during oh. my interpretation. Just like <laughs> We are in a classroom. I mean, for me, I was in a classroom with students like, you know, it's huge. Uh, I don't know how you would like an auditorium, like huge, big room. Yes. Uh, I'll tell you what I did afterwards, but um, go ahead and let me know what your ideas are. I mean, you can't um, like I mean, throw a pencil yeah, at no, someone. I was joking. But I know, I know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just like throwing out options. I'm do. just like throwing out options. Yes, you want to do that, but get the person who's sitting closest to them to get their attention. No, nah, I would just but keep they, going. Cool. Yeah, you would. What would, What else can you do? You have to keep going until they wake up. In my, so in my situation, have... the person closest to the interpreter was the deaf client. Oh. Oh. They were probably like, <laughs> they got fired. Okay. <laughs> 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 Two more minutes. Yeah. I think, no, I would just what did you, you got to keep going. going. Yeah, you, you just have to keep going. Unfortunately, of course. Unfortunately, you so don't have your team So let's to say this class is three yeah. hours long. Are you going to continue on for three hours? No. 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 Because your team is what would you do if your team interpreter was sleeping across the hall? No, 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 don't get her in. <laughs> when there is a break, confront that interpreter. If there is a break, what there, is there, there are no yes. breaks. There are no breaks. You are going to be interpreting ongoing for three so hours. I would do my 20 minutes. I would do my 20 minutes and then just go over there and be like, screw it. But then, but yeah, but then you're like, I need whatever seems good. Yeah, you're just going to have three hours. Maybe, look, maybe if there's a pause, it's like a page flip. Pause. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> So, in my case, not necessarily in this case, but in my situation, there was no page flipping. It was pure lecture. There's no reference to any book or anything. It's just lecture notes. Um, yeah, it was an intense science type of class. Oh. Very intense. Oh, no, no. And I needed a team throughout. Oh. That was tough. And I was actually um, subbing. I was not there oh, um, so from the no beginning so I had yeah no preparation so wow. I was there and I literally asked the destiny because I wasn't sure the lights were dim it was dark and I said is that interpreter sleeping <laughs> because it, oh my god the client <laughs> is the only person next to and I'm like soon we're gonna be switching I don't understand what's going on <laughs> 
<laughs> You're really <laughs> sleepy? I, I couldn't. I was in shock. I was in shock. What time was this class? <laughs> <laughs> it was in the afternoon. Morning. It was an afternoon. Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> sorry. There's no I just, like, and the, the deaf client yeah. looked, proceeded to look at the interpreter, confirmed, and said, yes, what are you going to do? Ask me. Ah! <laughs> they asked you what are you going to do? Yes, they asked me what are you going to do? What did you do? So what I did was I continued on until it was my time to switch. And when it was a good break time, you know, the lecture is ongoing, right? Um, so when it was a good break time where he's switching slides or whatever the case may be, I got up really quickly. I went up to the interpreter, tapped them, said, your turn. <laughs> I was like, yeah. and they just got up and went in their spot and started interpreting. Wow. And did you have music they do a good job? Agency? Well, APS, I did have I first. did have a talk. Yes, I had a talk with them afterwards. I mean, it's probably someone that I will never work with ever again because mm -hmm. there was no apology. It was just excuse after excuse. No so apology. I mean, yeah. No so th that so they literally wrote lunch. my life in this book here, <laughs> and that was very interesting. I had a big lunch. I, had, I just like had to rest I got my the eyes. Undis. I got the undis. <laughs> <laughs> it was a dim lighting. So, oh my God. Like, with that being said, we didn't have any time really to go over the one of the tips here in this book, no, but I'll just read, I know, let me just read you one, just to put it out there, okay? Um, when setting goals for yourself, think about what you can do, and don't just focus on what you can't. All right, so I'll leave you with that, and you can stop. Okay.